We had our very Merry Christmas, and now it's time for our Happy New Year, but as we transition, we must go through the top five WTF, which stands for, wow, that's freakish, for all you old people out there that don't know how us young kids communicate on the World Wide Web. Uh, we've got a lot to get to. 2018 was pretty crazy. We had Trump, we had Roseanne, we had porn, and we had beer. <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. I'm wearing this shirt that's summer-themed to protest how in January it's going to be summer because of global warming or whatever. I didn't have anything else to wear, but I'd first like to clarify, list is totally subjective. Obviously, there are more important stories than what we're going to be counting down, but I think these are things that are good to recap as we transition into 2019. So uh, here we go. Number five, the murder of Molly Tibbetts. You remember this one. It was a 20-year-old girl who was a student at the University of Iowa. She went jogging on July 18th. Uh, she wasn't heard from after that, and then police were able to use surveillance footage to identify a suspect that had been following her. Her in his car he led them to a cornfield and her body was discovered and this was a month later this guy was charged with first degree uh first degree murder and here's the plot twist he was an illegal alien imagine my shock that's paul joseph watson well imagine my shock well imagine my shock imagine my shock imagine my uh, this instantly became politicized by president trump and republicans to make the case for increased border security and then of course they were condemned for this by the left despite the left politicizing every mass shooting in order to implement gun control the difference between the two is that we can stop illegal immigrants from killing people by getting them out of our country, or at least stopping them from entering the country. You can't stop people from committing mass shootings by taking guns away because you'll never be able to take the guns away. And then in order to take them away, you'd have to start a civil war that would claim more lives than your bias and hollow research claims that you would save. And this issue should be nonpartisan. It really should. Taking guns away can't be nonpartisan because one party believes in the Constitution and the Second Amendment and the other party just doesn't. But both parties should believe in securing America's borders and getting illegal aliens out, but both parties don't because it just so happens that illegal aliens are overwhelmingly in support of Democrats. When Elizabeth Warren was confronted with this, here, here's what she said. Your reaction. You know, my, I'm so sorry for the family here, and I know this is hard, not only for the family, but for the people in her community, the people throughout Iowa. Um, but one of the things we have to remember is we need an immigration system that is effective, that focuses on where real problems are. Uh, last month, I went down to the border and I saw where children had been taken away from their mothers. I met with those mothers who had been lied to, who didn't know where their children were, who hadn't had a chance to talk to their children. And there was no plan for how they would be reunified with their children. What a nasty woman. She actually had the audacity to reiterate open borders talking points and cite that we need to keep families together when uh, the policies of her party are the cause of the family of Molly Tibbetts not being together with their daughter anymore. So um, forget about that. And for the record, Molly's father said that she wouldn't agree with the politicizing of her murder. And I, of course, want to respect her wishes, but... I also want to make sure that this happens less or never again in the future. So instead of Molly, let's use Officer Ronald Sin, uh, Krishia Odette, Peter Hacking, Ellie Hacking, Dominic Durding, Grant Ronbeck, Ronbeck, Officer Kevin Will, or Brandy Thorne and her unborn daughter. I apologize for the mispronunciation. These are the families that are affected. These families that enter our country illegally, that subject their daughters to the 60 to 80% chance of rape or sexual assault to child trafficking. Those parents aren't seeking a better life. Those means don't justify the ends. They're child abusers. American families, let me remind you, are the people you work for, Elizabeth Warren. You took an oath to protect the American people, the American families. To quote a great man from your state of Massachusetts, do your job. Number four, uh, the Parkland activists. These kids are so stupid. I truly mean... They are so stupid. I don't think any of them are intelligent. And I, I really just mean David Hogg. I'm not denying the severity of the tragedy that, that they went through. I'm not denying the emotional scars that they will be unjustly forced to live with for the rest of their lives. Uh, but this qualifies them to talk about tragedy, not gun policy. The thing about this story that I hated was just how the media exploited these kids to promote their agenda. And I truly feel bad for them. If you watch them speak, they misuse and mispronounce words. They're arrogant. They're entitled. And they were and are being used as puppets by the media. And it was just disgusting. Remember when they accused Marco Rubio of allowing this to happen or when he's like our parents don't know how to use a f democracy well at this point it's like when you're when you're old ass parents like i don't know how to send an i message and you're just like give me the f phone and you take it and you're like okay let me handle it and you get it done in one second sadly that's what we have to do with our government because our parents don't know how to use a f 
in democracy, so we have to. We don't live in a democracy, you idiot. I'm sorry the educational system has failed you so miserably. They were given the cover of time, they were all over the news, and the whole idea was just to appeal to the emotions of people, to compel them to ban assault rifles. And I really hate this because it's so obvious to anyone watching how little they actually know about guns or gun policy or the effects of said policy, but the media just kept putting them in everyone's living rooms despite that, and only because they could handpick the most radically liberal students at that school to use for their agenda. What about Kyle Kashev? He survived the massacre, but he didn't use that as an excuse to push gun control. Was he put on the cover of Time? No. In fact, he was bullied. He was accused of enabling events like this to happen because of his beliefs. The media has always liked using kids to promote their agenda for the record, like when Obama signed the ACA with the 11-year-old boy next to him so everyone could go, aww, Barry. You don't actually care about the kids. You're using them like puppets, and they'll go along with it because they like the attention. They like playing the role of brave revolutionaries like Emma Gonzalez with her Cuban flag patch. Are you kidding me? I wonder how gun control worked out in Cuba. After Castro took power, about a week passed before he asked, weapons? Weapons for what? We won. And then the revolutionary groups, were, okay, and so they handed over their weapons. Some time passed, and wait a second, Castro killed 40,000 people. Oh. Uh, number three, Kim Jong-un crosses into the South Korea, uh, the South Korea, sure. And then uh, no one ever thought this would happen, but it did, and it is indeed thanks to President Trump. The past administrations were more than willing to take the appeasement approach to dealing with North Korea, telling them that, oh, we'll keep helping you out, but uh, no nukes, all right, darling. And then, uh, you know, they go ahead and keep threatening to annihilate the West because they're not stupid. They know what works. They know what they have to do to sustain themselves, and that is play the, oh, what a crazy, I want to kill America, America's so bad, they took a South Korea. Like, no, they're not actually that suicidal. And that's not my impression of Asian people, by the way. That's my impression of Trey Parker's impression of Asian people. Um, and Trump knows that, so of course he's basically told Korea, you won't. And then Korea all of a sudden realized, yeah, we're stuck. We're going to have to make nice now because the U.S. isn't going to budge, not with Trump in office. And it was funny because everyone seemed so surprised when Kim was in the media, um, appearing to be, you know, relatively stable guy. Not a stable genius like our president, but still. And of course, he isn't actually hell-bent on nuking everything. It's just a strategy that worked for his country for a very long time because of the foolishness of our past leaders, but not anymore. So... Uh, number two, Stormy Daniels. It is act it's amazing to see how seriously this woman is taken by the media. No matter what your background is, if you do anything to help with the anti-Trump agenda, you will be given the spotlight. Stormy Daniels is, of course, an adult actress, which is a euphemism for someone that prostitutes themselves while a camera just so happens to be recording it. Um, the interesting thing about this scandal is that it really isn't so much about her and Trump as it is about her and Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen. The reason that this story is so important is because this is what's going to be used to try and impeach Trump and also take the White House from him in 2020 since Trump's lawyer was sentenced to three years for excessive campaign contributions of $130,000, which is pretty hypocritical since Obama's campaign took about $2 million in illegal contributions and just got a fine and a slap on the wrist. Then again, that Justice Department was entirely corrupt, so that should come as no shock. The highlight of this to me, honestly, is just that there's a Trump tweet for everything. Daniels claimed in one of her interviews that Trump was watching shark week despite being terrified of sharks when she was over and then someone found this tweet of his from 2013 it's just so funny this man is great also because she had to pay the legal fees for the defamation shoot suit excuse me that she tried to throw at him and uh donald trump is the only man that could force a prostitute to pay him it's absolutely amazing that is the art of the deal at work. And before we get to number one, I have some honorable mentions, such as when the left got all excited that Iceland became the first country to pass equal pay laws, despite the U.S. doing so in 1963. When kids got all scared about their internet addictions being forced to break after the net neutrality regulations evaporated, despite nothing changing. Uh, when Roseanne returned to phenomenal ratings, but then got canceled because Roseanne did that thing that comedians tend to do and made an offensive joke. And when the left tried to paint that lifelong Muslim Brotherhood member who defended Hamas and was pals with Osama bin Laden back in the day as some sort of martyr for the western values of liberty and truth those are pretty silly too last one number one justice brett kavanaugh remember this one probably not because it wasn't a useful story after midterms and his confirmation but this whole thing was such a disgrace how brett who's a revered legal mind who lived a successful and scandal-free life is all of a sudden being basic baselessly accused of sexual assault and gang rape despite there being virtually zero evidence and some of these accusers are now actually facing investigation after admitting that their accusations were false and rightfully so that of course was ridiculous also how the leftist senators were behaving throughout the trial totally biased totally acting for their agenda not giving this guy any chance at all um and then the next shocking part he stands up for himself brett kavanaugh's hearing paved the way for the republican establishment to grow up here donald trump moved the mountain don't get me wrong but brett kavanaugh he laid some sidewalk down and then uh, lindsey graham grilled his colleagues 
for behaving like children, and that was fun to watch. Uh, and then he got confirmed. Last shocking part, he votes in favor of easier abortion access. What? Who could have predicted that he wasn't the uber conservative that everyone in the media was portraying him to be? Brett Kavanaugh isn't even that partisan, which we'll talk more about later. Uh, 2019 is going to be jam-packed. New Congress with the left in control of the House, presidential cycles, maybe World War III. Who even knows? I'm excited, and I know you are too, so I hope you had a good new year. And uh, yeah, let's just get into 2019. Uh, resist Trump. Hey guys, if you like this video, click my face down there to subscribe, leave a thumbs up and a comment. And um, if you didn't get my joke, it was that I didn't have anything else to wear, so I thought that I'd wear a summer shirt and then claim it because I'm protesting how pretty soon winter's gonna be summer because of the global warming and climate change. Yeah, thanks so much for watching, and may God bless America. Ciao.